Hey guys, welcome back to SoCal Sports Report. I'm Bobby DeMiro with my co-host Elise Garcia back for another week of sports debate and discussion. And we have three interesting topics today. I shouldn't say fun. Two of them definitely are not yeah. fun. They're interesting and controversial. And then the third is the Los Angeles Lakers. Before we get and that there, though, sometimes isn't too fun. <laughs> it's been too fun this season. It's all controversial. Okay, yeah. so we have the most controversial week you're going to see so far on SoCal Sports Report. Before we get there, though, if you haven't already, get on Twitter or Facebook. We are at SoCal Sports TV. Follow us, like us, you know, whatever it is on those. Do a little bit of that. We have a great Twitter following, so thank you guys for talking with us, debating with us, answering our questions. At least last week I did notice we asked people, since the Dodgers TV deal is done and, and has a problem with it and nobody can watch them on TV, would Dodgers fans become Angels fans? And we got like a 100 responses that were like, hell no. Never, which we knew was going to happen. Dodger fans are loyal. They're very loyal. They've got a good fan base. They do have a good fan base. They've got a very aggressive fan base. And speaking of aggressive with the Dodgers, let's transition to Miguel Olivo. Smooth, huh? You see how I did that? <laughs> how long have okay. you been practicing that? I just came up with it right now. It's just improv. Just boom, 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 boom over there. But don't insult me or I might bite your ear off. Yeah. Well, um, we've gotten close a few times. I know. Seriously, it has been. We've been a little contentious yeah. on this show. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen anything like what Miguel Olivo and Alex Guerrero did? First off, not just the Mike ear biting, Tyson. we'll get to that, but fighting on the field. Fighting on the field in front of fans in AAA. This isn't yeah, this college is, guys, this isn't amateur guys. It's not the World Series, it's not Game 7, you know, a very important, you know, series or whatnot that determines. For what it's worth, it was Albuquerque Isotopes, the Dodgers AAA team, versus the, the Salt Lake Bees, the Angels AAA team. So it was a little bit of a rivalry, maybe. Maybe I don't not. think you can take it <laughs> But why, okay, first off, I think I, you can't blame Guerrero for the fight or getting his ear bitten off or something, but it takes two people to fight. So Guerrero at some I level- I really don't think so. If you see the video, he, Oliva was arguing over the pitcher's mound at Guerrero. But Guerrero did not, did not Guerrero throw his arm up at Oliva. I'm not saying Guerrero deserved what happened. He could have been like saying like, you idiot, you know. Yeah, I'm not saying Guerrero yeah. deserved what happened, but it takes two people to fight on some level. So on some level, Guerrero could have probably exercised a little more restraint. Now the story here is Oliva. Right. Uh, first off, you're an idiot because Guerrero is worth $28 million and you're making probably the Major League Veteran minimum as a backup catcher at 35. Yeah, at that point he's 35, mm -hmm. so yeah, 37 I think. Um, he's been playing for 13 years. He's on his way out. He's, you know, was called up because AJ Ellis was on the DL. Now that AJ and Ellis is back, they pushed him back down to and AAA. He, and he did so. okay. He was hitting like 370 in AAA. Yeah, he didn't do too And bad. he did all right with the Dodgers. Well enough for a backup catcher. Yeah. So it's like, you could have had another shot with the Dodgers this year. You could have gotten traded somewhere else. He had three or four more years probably. In, yeah, he's on his backup. way out though. But do you just think- <laughs> accelerated that. Really Dodgers quickly. released him on Friday. Do you think he ever plays again? No, of course not. You I think, think he's, his career's think over? He's done. What team is going to want to hire him? Well, there's more than that. I remember on the last day of the 2007 season, he started a fight with the Mets and Jose Reyes, ran across the field to punch Jose Reyes. Two teams that are out of the playoffs and had been for weeks, and he started a fight on the last day of the season. What are you doing? And then last year with the Marlins, he didn't like how he was playing, how much he was playing, so he shows up to batting practice one day, gets in a fight with the team, and leaves. Just, just goes home and spends the rest of the year at home because he's not, you know, he's not part of the team. All right, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm bad. Fine, I'll host this show alone, whatever. No, but I mean, he's, so he's obviously got a temper in the past. For what it's worth, Rockies beat writer Troy Rank, who's a great follow on Twitter, great baseball guy, he said that when Olivo played with the Rockies, he asked around and said to other players, if you could get in a fight with anybody in the majors, who's the guy you would least want to get in a fight with? Most guys said Kyle Farnsworth, the big reliever for right. the Mets. Everybody else said Miguel Oliva. Well, I mean, he's just an idiot who goes around, first of all, picking fights for no reason. And secondly, biting someone's ear? Who does that? Who bites, <laughs> who bites people's ears? This is, although, quick story. I must have been oh, like 13 and um, I wanted to be a lifeguard. And so I went to lifeguard camp. At lifeguard camp, this girl bit my friend's ear. Why is it always ears though? Because you have Mike Tyson, you have Olivo, and you have this girl. Maybe why it's is it easy to grab why is it on not the to? nose? <laughs> if you're gonna bite something that's gonna screw somebody up. Why not yeah, the nose? Yeah, I don't know. This wow. girl, you know. So it was like it wasn't okay for a 14-year-old to do that to a 13-year-old. No. 
It's not okay for two adults, for an adult to do that to someone else. Now, it's said that in the fight, apparently Miguel Oliva took a swung at Guerrero. Yeah, so Guerrero was in the back end of the dugout. He went to go grab his bat and helmet to go bat, and then um, Olivo came at him, hit him, and then I guess they got into it. Everybody was trying to separate them, and when they finally separated them, <laughs> Olivo had Guerrero's ear in his mouth. Like, See, well, it's not even tasty. Like, <laughs> what, are you hungry? How do you know? Because what, what <laughs> I read was... a little barbecue sauce well, <laughs> What I read was somebody had grabbed Olivo's arms and had held his arms back so he didn't have use of his arms, oh. and he bit Guerrero. I don't know if he thought Guerrero was going to hit him again or he was trying to be in self-defense, but part of me is like, if you're going to fight, if you're two men and you're going to fight, let them fight. Do what hockey does and let them hit each other. And when somebody hits the floor, exactly. That's why. Because he wouldn't have bit if his arms, if he had use of his arms. Right. Let them fight each other. And then when somebody hits the floor, it's over. So that brings up an interesting point. In sports, you're going to have arguments. You're going to have people that fight. It's just the nature of the game. Hockey is a little bit more aggressive. So uh, what, I don't know the exact rules, but when do they actually stop? It's 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 they fight until somebody hits the ground. Okay. When they go to the ground, it's over. Or if somebody gets a clear upper hand and somebody's you know so can you in danger, fight, of, like how they fight in hockey in baseball. I think you should be able to. But like, can you? No. Are you to? Oh no. I mean, you've seen yeah. Vince playing brawl. They'll break people right. up like that immediately. And it's a group thing in hockey. It's always one on one. They don't have group fights exactly. in baseball. It's always a group thing. I think. And you could never write a rule more. about this. But like, <laughs> if you're gonna have two guys fight, let them actually fight. But let are there rules in hockey? Other. Yeah. I think there's rules in hockey for fighting. That's now. what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. so, I mean, you have a penalty, but you just right, let them exactly. fight. You punch yeah. each other, and then it's over. And if you talk to hockey guys after fights, they're really calm. They're like, yeah, we got the fight, whatever. Yeah, because it's, it's the most normal. Non-jalant. Exactly. You, like, you go to a hockey game to watch the fight. Let's oh, for real. sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You don't go to a baseball game to watch the fight. But I mean, it's interesting. Yeah, it's always, a, you know, but it's more, it, it is at a baseball, baseball game. It's the two teams going after each other. Yeah. I actually remember oh, watching boy. the USC UCLA fight. Oh yeah. Um, a couple of years ago, and but the funniest thing wasn't the actual because every year it's like one of those things you expect there to be some type of scuffle, some type of fight um, because they're such rivals. And it was a couple of years back, one of the players I forget which side threw took off their shoe and threw his shoe <laughs> to the other side. It was like really that's the best you got. <laughs> and then and then after the shoe went flying over, you see the um, the ref running around, but I guess it had been like misty, slips and slides, like a slip and slide. <laughs> it's so funny to watch that video replay over and over again. I'm gonna have to check YouTube for that. Yeah. Both Latin American guys, or both Hispanic guys, Guerrero's Cuban. Um, I think Olivo is from, He's I'm not Dominican. sure. Is he yeah. Dominican? Okay, so both Hispanic guys. My question is, because I've heard a lot of grumbling from people on you know sports talk radio and blogs and stuff, and oh, you know, Miguel Olivo, Latin American player, big temper, you know, we've seen Puig, Big Temper, Hispanic player, that connection with temper flaring and Hispanic origin, horribly racist, kind of true. Being somebody of Hispanic origin, like where do you, is this a true thing that you look at Hispanic guys and say, oh, they've got tempers, or is that just like, come on, everybody has a temper. Jeff yeah, Kent has I think everybody has a temper, but you know, obviously stereotypes come from some type of validity about something. So, um, yeah, I mean, everybody knows, oh, Cubans have hot tempers, but I wouldn't call that racist. It's not like, it's an, it, you know, if you have a hot temper, maybe that's like a negative aspect of your personality, but it's like, everybody has negative qualities. So I wouldn't say that that's racist. Hmm, interesting. Because anybody can have a hot temper. Do you have a hot temper? Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> You haven't seen it yet, huh? Okay, well, watch my ears. Let's yeah. move on to the second topic. And the nose. <laughs> and the no oh my god, okay, I'll just do it like this. All right, so number two, we've got the Lakers. They've got the number seven draft pick. Should they trade the pick? Very simple question. Should they trade the pick? Should they keep the pick? How do they get Kevin Love? I see a catch-22. If they trade the pick to Minnesota in a package for Love, they don't have enough left over in here in LA <laughs> that, that Love, they don't have enough here in LA that Love is gonna want to be a part of because they're gonna have to give up so much. If they keep the pick, they don't have enough else on the roster to go get luck. Well, and also if they keep the pick, they're trying to rebuild right now. They need someone with a little bit more experience that can come in and kind of guide the team and lead the team. I know Kobe's coming back, but they need someone else too. And so um, I think you need someone that's been in the league, been playing for you know at least a couple of years yeah. to, to bring that experience versus 
bringing someone up who was literally learning from the ground up. Well, and this is a deep draft. The Sacramento Kings are picking eighth. They're already talking about trading that pick eighth. So a lot of teams are going to want to get picks. So I have a feeling there's going to be a good market for that seventh pick, whether the Lakers trade it straight up or they draft the guy and like trade him on draft day or something, True. which happens too. Um, What's my, better? It depends who you draft, I guess. I, I guess one way to do it, and teams do this, if the Timberwolves or whoever say, hey, we really want so-and-so drafted, the Lakers draft that guy, right. trade him to Minnesota. I just think you trade the pick. Wash your hands of it right now, trade the pick, get Kevin well, Love yeah, or whoever. Yeah, it's just like, it's one less extra, you know, trade yeah. and pick that you have to deal with. If you just go get Love right now, he's already expressed so much interest that he wants to come to LA. He's from LA, so why not just go get him now? You think it's a guarantee? Well, we shouldn't talk about that. We're gonna talk about love next week, so I don't yeah. wanna talk about that. This isn't about love, this is about the Lakers. Um, one other thing, one thing why I advocate for trading the pick is last year, Anthony Bennett in Cleveland, first pick overall from UNLV, kind of a surprise that he went first. He was horrible this season in Cleveland. Well, so bad. no guarantee as but, in any sport. And you that's, really don't know. And that's the thing. He was so bad that he is now a trade liability for them and they can't get the value for him that they would have gotten a year ago. Right. So go so, after someone that you know can add value to your team and you're not actually taking a bet on. Like, and, you know. And it's the idea but it's of... it's always a gamble with anybody. Kobe has one, two years left. So usher in a new player who can usher in a new era with the Lakers, who is not a rookie, who is not untested from college, but who knows a little bit about the NBA. Right. And Love is a 20 and 12 guy. It'd, it'd be hard pressed to find somebody better than that. We'll talk about Kevin Durant like years from now, but Love is here on the table right now. Go get him, trade the pick. Sounds good. I don't know, we wanna know what you guys think because <laughs> we're in obvious agreement about that. So tell us on Twitter, at SoCal Sports TV, what the Lakers should do with the number seven pick. We went through a whole Lakers topic, didn't even talk about coaches. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, topic number three, we're gonna stay in basketball, although it is an off-the-court topic. It is the Los Angeles Clippers and Donald Sterling. You've seen it for three weeks now, at least. You followed this whole thing. Everybody jumped on, you know, jumped on the story right when it came out. Everybody's reacted to everything going on. Sterling just said, you told me he's gonna now sell the team. Yeah, it's either his his portion or his wife's or agreed to sell his wife's portion. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure, but yeah, I just saw that. What is your reaction to the entire story? What's your gut reaction right now, three weeks old? What do you think? I just think we need to stop talking about it. It's all <laughs> news. Like, I feel like people just don't have enough things to talk about. So they're like, oh, let's bring up Donald Sterling. Um, plus it's such a like easy attack that, yeah. you know, people like, people like to bring people down. And so it's a, uh, it's very easy for people to talk about that. I know we're gonna talk about the privacy issue because that's something that people don't talk about. And I know you have your own opinions on that, but the reality is, is that this was filmed without him, or sorry, recorded without him knowing that he was being recorded. He was totally set up to say these things. And so no one's really talking about that side other than the fact of, you know, what he said. Obviously he shouldn't be saying those things. He's an idiot to begin I, with. I, I think a lot of people are talking about that. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar did, Matt Johnson did. did. Which I actually like because they went past the racial point and and just kind of like didn't talk about that and actually talked about the actual situation of what happened. Because I think in the moment it's very easy to get heated with the racial with what his his actual remarks. So it was good for someone um, that you know that is black African American to, to talk about say like hey that's not what we're talking about right now. Let's let's talk about the bigger picture and then we can talk about that. I, I agree with you, and, and you're you're right about the legality of recording somebody without their consent in their own home and privacy, so I understand that. However, as an addendum to that, extra legal, not a legal issue, but you and I, and maybe this is a generational thing because we're younger and older people may not understand this, although I don't know, I would like feedback. You and I have grown up with cell phones, cameras, you know, look how we're filming this thing. Right. Everybody has the technology to film everything right now. And I almost take for granted that, hey, if I say something, yeah, it might be being recorded. It may be recorded illegally, but it might be being recorded, so if you don't want it to come out, just don't say it. Yeah, but then at the same time, again, that kind of, I don't know, I feel like I come from a different, I agree with you, because I don't think you should be, if, if there's any camera around, look at Obama, like, you know, sometimes his mic is on and he That's says- That's the thing, he's on a hot mic like 12 things. hours a day. Yeah, <laughs> so I think he's learned, hopefully. Um, but, you know, I come from, my family comes from Cuba where everything was censored, and so, um, maybe I'm biased or I, I, you know, because I have that personal anecdote, I, I don't think that that's, I don't think that that's right. And I think that that's sad the, that socially and culturally we're changing to a direction where you really do have to 
be careful with what you say because then when you're censoring what you say, then what happens to freedom of speech? Oh, I agree with you. I think it's a sad thing that's happening. I just think it is a fact of the matter. Hey, everything's getting recorded. Everybody has security cameras. Every home and business has cameras right, right now. Deal with it. I'm not saying it's right because there are a lot of privacy issues, but you have to understand that if you say something offensive, there's a good chance somebody's going to pick it up. Or if you tweet something offensive, there's a good chance somebody's going to find it later. You know, I mean, everything is public now. And that's not necessarily a good thing, but it's something we need to navigate intelligently. And Donald Sterling did not do. Right. Yeah. It just, it's, it's, I think I, I'm more affected by it because I think, I just think it's sad that we're moving into this direction where, where you can't really say how you feel. And well, you can't see that's a distinction. Well, you can say how you feel. You just don't necessarily get protected from the consequences of saying how you feel. Right. So if you said something horrible about black people, which you're not going to do because you don't feel that way, but if you said it, you're allowed to say it. I can't, you know, beat you up. Right. But there might be a consequence of you saying yeah, it, exactly. and you have to deal with that. Now, topic or going off of that, it's interesting because everybody was so quick to attack Donald Sterling. Mark Cuban comes out, talks about, you know, if he's a black kid with a hoodie, he's going to walk to the other side of the street and he sees a white kid with tattoos on the other side of this street, he's gonna walk back over to the other side. No one's attacking him. Yeah, he needs to be careful. <laughs> he, needs so, to be, he needs to be careful. I believe he apologized to Trayvon Martin's family for the Yeah, I don't think I heard that, yeah. Um, he's gotta be careful, like you don't, ugh. So, but that, that's funny because he, it's interesting, Donald Sterling says those things in the privacy of his own home, is recorded illegally, and now, you know, all, all the backlash that he received, Mark Cuban said that in an interview. I think Cuban will get backlash. I think Cuban will continue to get backlash for that. Okay. You know, and I know the point he was trying to make is a, you know, it's not a race thing. It's a looking like a gangster thing. So okay, whatever. And that is a whole nother topic yeah. because, you know, how you people are people are prejudiced. I look like a gangster right now. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, the, the people are prejudiced, sure. and and regardless of whether you believe that's right or wrong, people are going to have their opinions of you and first impression is me and how you dress says a lot about yourself and so if you don't want to be categorized in a certain group good or bad then don't dress like that because other people are going to assume you're you just that. advocated freedom of speech you got to advocate freedom of dress if i get face tattoos i can get face tattoos yeah i'm not i'm totally for that you just got to deal with the consequences deal with the consequences exactly. of how people are going to react to that one last point on donald sterling from me he has been in court for like a decade doing horribly yeah. racist things, saying horribly racist things, and paying millions of dollars in restitution for those horribly racist things. And it took a scandalous tape from some salacious mistress to go to TMZ to bring him down when there are open court records for over a decade of the crap he's been doing here in Los Angeles. That is a microcosm, not of him or whatever, but of our culture and what we look to for to, to bring people, people down. Yeah. Because you're, you're right, everybody wants to bring everybody down all the time. Just look at some of the comments people get on Twitter. Look at some of some of the comments people send us. Did you see the, I think it was Jimmy Kimmel, he did this. Uh, oh, the celebrities the celebrity, read me tweets. Yeah, they, I love they that. read their, yeah. their, the tweets, the horrible tweets about them that people tweet. And it's yeah. just like really funny. Because it's, but it's true because it's so easy to tweet or do whatever and say but something that's negative. The thing. It goes back to the point where I think people are cowards these days. Oh, and no sure. one would ever say that to someone's face. For sure. They're only saying it because they're behind some a screen and you know, they have nothing yeah. better to do and they want to bring someone down and they feel shitty about themselves and so they're gonna say something mean about someone else. We're gonna have to censor our least now. <laughs> <laughs> I caught a bad word in there. It's okay, it's YouTube. We'll put a, we'll put a, uh, Can we have that on YouTube? Yeah, we'll put an yeah. adult warning on the video or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, watch out for this word, at least, watch at least Yeah, but have you seen any of the interviews from the Donald Sterling's girlfriend, B? A little bit, not really. Oh, man. She's a She's a winner. <laughs> yeah, that's, is that's a, a separate winner. issue. Maybe, maybe stay away from the mistresses. Also, yeah. does she have a first name or is it just V? Well, she's changed her name multiple times. Of course she has. Yeah. yeah so who knows? I mean, maybe she'll change it again because she doesn't want to be associated with this anymore. So I feel like, well, and she she wears that visor. So at least, I started wearing a visor like that. Well, are you telling me that Donald Sterling's now in the market for another mistress? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> what are you doing this summer? I am taken. <laughs> I am happily, happily taken. <laughs> and not by a 75-year-old guy. No. All right, guys, that's it for this week on the show. We want to know as we leave this episode what you guys think about Donald Sterling. Obviously, topics been discussed a lot. And specifically, this is a good one to lead off a new debate. Maybe we'll talk about it in a few weeks. Should the league have the right to take the team from him? Does the league have that right? And do you want to see the team taken from him? And as a corollary, if the team gets taken from him, 
Would they move the Clippers to like Seattle? No. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't have any insider information, obviously, but it would be interesting. <laughs> you look like you do. No, I don't. I wish I did, but it would be interesting. <laughs> That's it on the show this week, guys. For Elise, happily taken, not Donald Sterling's mistress. I'm Bobby, not happily taken, but also not Donald Sterling's mistress. <laughs> we'll see you guys Good next thing. time on SoCal Sports Report. Bye.